Why does every single episode have chuckles before them at this point? Like, I swear, every, it's all my fault. Anyway, hello, welcome, 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 welcome to the other side of mommy. I feel like, yeah, I just need like some crystals and some waters to fall, like, <laughs> you know, seriously guys, hello, <laughs> welcome. To another fabulous episode of On the Other Side of Mommy because there's more to this mom life. I am your wonderful host, Tanisha T. Moore, and I am joined today by somebody who's been on the show in the past already. And, you know, she, she's okay. I mean, that's why I asked her to come back, so, I, you know, to the party. <laughs> today, I choose violence. I do. You choose the violence that you want. I choose the violence on the 10th day of Black History Month, but also Happy Black History Month. So I have one here today, JM, or well, that's what I call her, but Me. Jamila Young, uh, my law partner, my best friend, my sister, just like my, my person. And so today we're going to talk about on the other side of dating as a single mom. Um, I still is married, so I don't know. Because from what I'm hearing is that it's um, some pee and some poop and some throw up and piranhas and some other shit out there in the in the dating pool. So it seems like I'm a I'm a stick beside what I got uh, for right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, before we get going, Jam, say hello to the people. Remind us who you are. Who are you? Like I said, Moana. Who you are? Is it happening? Mm. I don't think it's happening. I don't want to leave that. Um... Is it happening though? What's she saying? You really are. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I am Jamila. Yeah. Oh, so you're, J- you're Jamila. To- you're Jamila today. Yeah, so sometimes I'm Jamila. Sometimes okay. I just want to know who you are. So now we really need to know who you are. <laughs> Me Jamila. My mom calls me Jamila. They are married. They're still married. So don't you love that? That's black people for it. Just it just matters what day of the week it is. So it is what it is. I'm going to keep this episode because it now is recorded that I am your best friend and I could feel the love. So whenever you try to act funny, oh, damn it! This is what happens when I don't it's think ahead. It's too late. It's too late. But yes, um, I'm Jamila. We're love. Our, our Jamila. Jamila, I have one son. He is six. He is going to be mm-hmm. my, um, my only little best friend for now. But yes, mm-hmm. I'm excited today to tell you all about what it's like on the other side of dating. On the other side of the street. Yeah, it's ghetto. It's ghetto. So what we always like to do is we like to give a little inspiration to the mamas out there because I feel like, you know, we need it. We have a lot that we're doing. So... This one in particular for my, I think this particular quote, though, can go for anybody. So, date because you want to and are ready, not because you feel it's required of you. This is the only way to date successfully as a single mom. But I would venture to say that it's just the way they, period. Period. With a child or, you know, if you're a child-free person, like, that is, like, because you really want to. So, like, when you think about the gym, like, what do you hear? Like, you know, as a single mom, like, this is what they're saying. I don't know who the person is. Y'all can't give credit for credit to because it's, it's unknown. So, if you if you said it, but no, like, no. I agree with you. That can go for anybody, any instance, anything. Because, yeah. Maybe because you want to, you know, in society right now, there's so much pressure to go ahead and date, to go ahead and get married, to go ahead yes. and date. It's like, um, my my married friends, day after they're married, or even at the wedding. So when are y'all gonna start having kids? Child, 
do whatever you listen want to when you want to when you feel like safe in that space to do it correct I, like, the pressures of life like i don't know like society places such high right. standards on on everything it's like you barely get time to breathe once you reach a milestone it's like okay what's next what's like, <laughs> i just got here i just arrived to the party um, um give me a second to breathe on my own. You know, let me mind my own uterus and fallopian tubes for a little while and decide what I want to do. And you know, with some processes here, like it's just it's weird. I think people are just weird. And I just think like it applies, like you said, that it can go for any even beyond dating, like jobs, you know, like careers or going to school like or whatever. It's like do it because it's something you actually want to do. And I just feel like that's the thing. Because I feel like that's the trap that so many of us find ourselves in. See, we often talk about this about putting yourself first and thinking mm. about yourself because the way the world works a lot of times people tell you what is required of you based on their vision. So mm. that's the word. He became a writer. I want to become a writer. You put yourself first. You learn how to put yourself first. Because if you aren't first, you can't be good for anybody else or anything else. Listen, I, I remind. Yeah, we talk about this all the time because I remind myself. And then, you know, of course, I remind our audience, like, listen, as women, especially as moms, hmm. we have to put, the, I'm telling you, the airline industry got it right. Like, you really have to put that oxygen mask on first. Before you can help anybody else, you have to be secure. And I think we get muddled as mothers because of all, all of a sudden all the roles we're now taking on. So now it's like, yeah, our identity is now locked in as mom. And so now that I'm mom, I'm now a martyr. <laughs> and so that means I come last in everything. And so when, you know, when you think about this in the dating concept, right? Um, and you don't have a partner, whether you choose just to not have a partner, because some people don't want to get married, they just right. want the kid, or some people who, that wasn't their lot. Like, so when you're putting that into context, how do you put that oxygen mask on first if you're deciding to enter into dating, especially as a single parent? Like, what, what does that look like putting that oxygen mask on first? If that makes sense. So I have a really good friend who's a therapist. Her name is Naomi. Shout out to you, Naomi. Naomi. We love Naomi. And we have conversations sometimes about non-negotiables. Mm. So putting on your oxygen mask first does require knowing what your non-negotiables are. Right. In dating. And like I told T before this, I was like, I'm not telling you all if I'm in a relationship or not. That's my business. I like that privacy. Come on, Tab. <laughs> that private because they'll see like my son and food all over my Instagram every other day for certain things. But I think you have to be protected, right? Like I think you kind of have to, right? Like especially as a single woman, like I feel like you have to have that boundary. That protection. So mm -hmm. I take mask first. My non-negotiables. Yeah. What am I not going to stand for? Mm -hmm. For me, uh, you smoke cigarettes. We ain't doing that. Um, politics. What about uh, weed? Weed? I mean, the edible hair there. Yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't bother me. It's the smell of cigarettes that bother me. Yeah, they're so <laughs> gross. The smell of cigarettes because it stays on you. I don't want that. I can't kiss you. What am I going to do with that? So, none of that. Look at Ashley at that point. <laughs> like, what are your beliefs? What are your core beliefs? Mm -hmm. So, yes. that's really important. I think, yeah, and just for anybody when you are dating, even with friendships, relationships, but yeah, I you you have to be equally yoked. And this, you do. this goes for if you're a Christian, you're not a Christian, being equally yoked. Mm -hmm. So putting that option yeah. as first, seeing you know what you will stand for and what yeah. you're not going to stand for. So you got to think of yourself first. Think about, yeah, what is Jamila? Jamila. Like, and what does she need in a relationship first? So I got to mm -hmm. first get to that boundary. So I think that's yeah. kind of one of the most important parts for me when it comes to that. That makes a lot of sense. So when you are thinking about, like, before your child, before Trey, so when you were child-free and now having a child, what are some of the differences you are seeing in, the, in dating, like, 
Because I can only imagine, like... Listen. First of all, freedom. <laughs> oh, no, no freedom. <laughs> You just have a certain level of freedom. If you're dating somebody and they're like, it's Tuesday right now, and let's say it's Tuesday, and hey, can you come out Wednesday morning for breakfast? Okay, yes or no. Mm -hmm. Now I have to think about, do I need to drop my child off here? Who needs to be there? Mm -hmm. And do I need to set up an arrangement or anything else? So mm -hmm. um, the, the freedom aspect is huge. Baby. Child care. Child care. Child care. If, even if you're not a single parent, child care, it is expensive out here. It's ghetto. Let me. Baby. Let me just, wait a minute. Did you shoot me? I did. <laughs> it, it is, is that how you pay for your dating? How you pay for, um, for daycare? You, you sometimes gotta shake a little. Well, <laughs> shake a little. The situation is different. If you need yeah. to offer a babysitter, one thing I noticed, I have, I have a great circle of friends. Mm -hmm. When we're going to brunch or something, it's the circle of friends. So I need right. So who's gonna watch? <laughs> right, who's not in the circle? So you have to think about things like that. Mm -hmm. When I was able just to go off on a whim, do it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do. If I, I I'm yeah. a road tripper. If I wanted to yeah. go on a road trip to DC right now, I would pack up and go. Yeah. I, oh Lord, what time is the town get off the bus? What time? Mm -hmm. is so those are some of like the aspects that were just, mm. and then like minor details, getting ready easily. My child, mm. my shadow, my <laughs> shadow. So if I'm over here trying to get drip, so. mm. so mommy, yes. it's the level of touching that they do. It's like I remember Sid was sick a few weeks ago, and the way mm. first of all, it was like the the snot was green. That's number one. She probably don't want me on top. But I would say it was a lot going on. Yes, and I just remember. Yeah, and I just, I asked her, why are you touching me? Like, she was literally, we was arm to arm. And she laughed. I mean, she chuckled. And she's like, she does. You're soft. And I was like, but you're sick. And like, please. Like, go away. <laughs> those are some of the differences I think of. But sometimes, you know, I like to think of. There's got to be a positive somewhere in here. So for somewhere. me, and maybe for some other people, you might have an agreement with the child's father, mother, whoever. Mm -hmm. So I have built-in days where I know my child will not be with me. Mm. And I know why I can be at that time. I know what I can do. I know I can get an eight-hour nap. <laughs> I'm going on a date during those days. So I do have built in days. And I talked to T about this. I'm like, you know, I miss my child and everything else, but I really do have built in days to my life. Listen. I have in days which are amazing. So I'm like married people, let me tell you. <laughs> okay? We don't have those luxuries. At, at first that was really hard for me. <sighs> was hard for me. But it is kind of like a luxury where it's it's with that. Um, I think the yeah. difference is if I have am or have decided to date someone with a child, I don't have mm -hmm. to be taught how to be a parent person. I understand, hey, yeah, I'm able to do this today because my child has basketball or something else like that. Mm -hmm. well, there's a positive there too because I already have those motherly skills. Another mm -hmm. difference is please no. If a single parent is dating you and they have their child the majority of the time, a lot of the time, we must really care. We gotta care. Yeah. Because we have got to be to. we gotta get other care. We gotta trust somebody with our child. We got <sighs> we must really care about you because I'm not I'm not gonna waste my Because what am I doing that for? Because what am I doing for for somebody who's not worth it? Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Because there are things when people think about single parents dating, they're like, mm -hmm. oh, Oh, these are all the hard things, but there are some positives there. So those are the positive sides that I can see of that and the differences yeah. when I was young and out here just, you know, dating, dating out here easily. In them streets, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I miss those days. Um, anyway, I miss, the, I, I miss them. 
a little, just a little bit. So, you know, has, has, listen, because as a married person, like people, like, again, I'm like brushing to that next level, you get married. Because now once you, if you're dating somebody and decide to get married, you now you're answering to this person. Whereas when you say, oh, it, listen, if I leave, anybody asking for me where I'm going, I'm going. Now I got to check in. I got to let people know where I'm going. That makes your life 360 app shows where I'm at. I got to do too much. You talk about having someone to watch your kid. I, and you if know, anyone calls me, you know I have my kids. 99.9% of the time. Like, that is not an exaggeration. I literally have a child nearby me at some yeah. point. Like, see what attached you to it. I'm in Target. My mom's like, oh, who's that over there? Okay, you got to know. You got mm-hmm. one. Like, they know, like, it's so funny because y'all know, like, y'all be like, oh, it's, it's, that's Nana or that's Jay. Like, everyone knows at this point which child it is. Oh, you're here because Target is our favorite place to go. Um, so, like, that's like a, that's like a family field trip for us. Like, Target to go. In, I'm actually supposed to go today because I need to get Valentine's stuff. Um, but, like, that's that's our, that brings us joy. We love the store. We, we love the store, and it's just a lot going on. But, yeah, it's that there's some freedoms, I think. And I think a lot of times that married women won't say out loud is that we kind of are, maybe not envious is the right word, but we miss those times. We miss the ability to get up and go when we were child-free and, you know, we're able to kind of date how we wanted to date. And then even when we decide to get married, we miss like okay like damn i got this kid all day like shit like to be able like there is no built-in day where they're going with daddy like daddy lives here and um you know it's like a negotiation tactic when you're married it's like so if you stay home with the kids what i can do for you is i'm like yeah, we gotta give them some. You gotta, we gotta do a little shit and shake. You know what I'm saying? Like, you watch them. I come back and I'll show you a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You watch these kids. Like, I don't wanna do all that. I don't wanna do all, I don't wanna shimmy shake on your little ping ping for me to get two hours to myself. Cause I be having fingers coming under the door sometimes when I'm in the bathroom. Oh, it's annoying. It's like, mom, mom, what are you doing? I mean, one time one of them pulled up and pulled out. Like their little sketch pad and they're starting to draw them on the toilet. I'm like, what are we doing here? What are you doing? Well, are you pooping? Yeah, like, are you pooping? I might be. Do it matter? Thanks in here. And why, are you- why are you here? Yes. I have my moment. Just all I asked for. It's really, I'm going I'm to move on. You know, so like, so when you think about that, when you like talk about the differences and now that you know these differences, you know, then what becomes the goal when you're like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to date. These are the goals as I'm dating. So I kind of mentioned like my non-negotiables. I have to look. Mm-hmm. At definitely have to look. Mm-hmm. At so another big thing for me is coming healed. Mm. But that, if that ain't a millennial buzzword, that's how you know you're millennial. <laughs> healed. But also there's another aspect that people try to gloss over. I need to come to that person healed too. And that's that's how you know I've been to therapy. I that's think no. There are people who jump right back into the dating field right after. It's almost like a rebound. It's just to feel again and everything else. Yeah. Or you jump back in. It might be a few years after, but you're still not healed. You may not be ready. In space. Uh, for for me myself, I mean, I know I've been in bad places, and I've had yeah. to evaluate things like that. So I had a whole therapist, but. Yeah, goals coming healed. You come healed. I'm healed. Let's do that. And if you're in the process of healing, that's fine. But yeah, coming to a place with not someone coming and they're not even trying or anything else because baby, I can't fix you. I can't. I can't. I can't mother you and mother my child. Like I cannot do that. I can't. Also, I cannot be a therapist. I cannot be your life coach. I can't be all these things because I had to pour into this little human that I'm dealing with. You grown person need to come. Put your stuff together. So we all have that, right? We all have things, traumas and stuff. Are you doing the active work to be that way? And so I would say this, something that I've here recently learned that I would even share with my, my kids is really get to know yourself, yeah. right? Because how do you know what it is that you're wanting 
if you don't know who you are. And so oftentimes it's like, how can I love me or love, tell someone how to love me if I don't know how to love myself, if I don't embody self-care? And then you walk into a relationship with expectations that really are unrealistic because you're basing it off of society, your own norms, your own trauma, trying to fix your own trauma through another person who cannot fix you, who can't fix those internal scars. That is so good. I'm telling you, us millennials are doing the work. We have to do the work. I know, I know they don't be liking that, <laughs> but we really are. Because they know that like, y'all the gentle parenting. It's like, we have to. <laughs> yeah. To our kids as well. So, mm -hmm. healed. Um, another goal when I am dating is making sure I'm evaluating the person, not just for myself, but for mm -hmm. my child as well. I tell yeah. anybody who I'm dating or currently like with, mm -hmm. I'm not just dating for me. We are a package deal. I say that mm -hmm. in the and everything else. I could be head over heels in love with someone. If yeah. I don't be that person around my child if i can't see that person around my child being there because i have my child 75 percent of the time if not more yeah if see that i can't be with you and yeah. that is something for me so that's one of my my goals to evaluate that person not just being blindsided by oh mm -hmm. so good oh they're doing everything for me oh they're doing all this mm -hmm. but then i can see to the side that they might have a child and they're not doing anything for their child or they're treating Girl. that child's parent incorrectly. Flag on the play. Like those things matter. Like, I don't know if people know that. It's like, oh, he talked to his mama crazy. Girl, he'll talk to you crazy too. <laughs> well, if, if, if he shows you who they are, believe, believe them. If I you gotta do it in her voice. Me. Don't, don't, don't kind of go, well, they, they do that with them because they, they had a bad relationship, but it's not going to be me. It's okay if you are not besties with your child's mama, your child's daddy, or anything else. However, mm -mm, you, don't you don't have to be best but, are you, but there's a respect. Yeah. And so that's there has because you, at some point you laid with this person and you felt enough connection with them to lay with them to create life. Whether it was purposeful or not, the fact is life has been created. You you just need to act like you got some damn sense. Something. Something. I'm also at a point in my life if if I am dating you, I am dating you for the long term. I'm not out here trying to hit and quit or anything like. It's just my love for that now at this point. <laughs> for that. And you know what? Maybe you know Diddy out here. Maybe Diddy they listen. He figured out a, is he Diddy? Is he Diddy now or is he Brother Love? Because Brother Love, Puck, Sean, he is him. Whoever that he wants to be is that might be something that they're into, but it's not something Jamila Jamila. You don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So do that. those are kind of like those. I think are major aims and things that I look mm -hmm. for. In doing in dating life and everything else so it just that, that's important to that's important to me and that how aspect. important is it for you i guess to lay all this stuff up front like hey Absolutely. i have a child um this is the type of uh, this is the type of relationship that i'm looking for i'm not looking for something that is for the moment i'm looking for an actual lifetime partner like how on a scale, like I guess one to ten, like how important are those? So there are people who lie about having children, like it won't mention that they have a child. It's really weird to me that people do that, but like people do that type of stuff, and then people are not honest about. Yeah, they lie all the time, but for me, it's very important. I yeah. am very transparent in the very beginning about everything. Like right now, mm -hmm. y'all, where I am in a relationship or anything else, because y'all need all that. All right, Beyonce. Beyonce, you're going to have to tickets for that? You might as well put it out there. You never know if I get you one. <laughs> hey, girl. But I lay everything out in the beginning. I have, mm -hmm. a, I have a child with a special need. I, mm -hmm. um, this is the time that I have for you. This is what I'm looking for. These are my core beliefs. These are things that I will not stand for. I put it all out there because I'm not going to guess in the end. 
I, I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to have someone guessing or to misrepresent myself or for them to misrepresent themselves. Just, Yo, did you see that? Oh, just when you said that, just brought back. You see that thing on Instagram about that, that girl who had like this um, Google questionnaire form for potential dating partners. And it was like, what is your favorite color? What it, like, it was legit. I mean, st- short of stopping asking him his blood type. I don't think I saw that one, but I've seen a lot of people with Yo. this like that. They, now, I don't know. I don't, I don't knock it. I mean, I don't knock the list per se. Now, but I will have a conversation with you. It, there have yeah. been a lot of lessons learned. There have been a lot of lessons learned for me what to do, what not mm-hmm. to do. Best for mm-hmm. me, not best for me and all. So there have been a lot of lessons learned in this kind of wave of, of dating. Yeah, yeah. That makes so much sense. So when you're talking to another single mom, right, and you're she's like, Girl, I'm getting ready to get out here in these streets, you know, COVID gone. I'm getting ready to turn it up, turn it up, clap, 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 cheeks clapping. Um Why? Why? Why cheeks clapping? <laughs> you. I don't I don't it just came out. I just felt natural to say like the cheeks okay, okay. But maybe that's what she wants. She maybe wants you know, that's what I was thinking. Like, maybe that's what she's trying to get. Anyway, that's off topic. So, any advice <laughs> for those moms who are getting ready to, like, get back in there? I'm saying, like, she might want a little cheap clap. That's an ass plate. That's what Big Sean said. Anyway. Um, okay, we got a little too excited. This is- I did. This is how you know yes. we got kids. This is how you know you have kids and you don't get out often. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta, okay. I don't know how to add. Okay, okay. I do. I do have some advice. It mm-hmm. is like that quote that you have in the beginning. For me, mm-hmm. the leap when you are actually ready. Just because your ex is dating somebody already, just because people are tapping you on the shoulder saying, "When are you gonna date again? You need to get back out there." Do not do it mm-hmm. already. I even believe that Drew Barrymore, like, they did an interview on her about being a single mom, things like that. But mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of people come up there and they'll say, let me take a moment. Yeah, to let me breathe. Who, who I am. Yeah. Come in and take a moment before you get back out there. You don't You don't have to rush. If it takes Mm-mm. you five, six years to go on your first date again, that's fine. Wait. Do what's best for you. I think that's, yeah. that's my number one thing because... Um, in the beginning, people ask me, okay, it's time for you to get out there and get Trey, someone to play with, and so you can be. Oh, oh, why? But why? Because <laughs> those, those are our social. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's okay. It's okay to feel guilt. It's okay to feel mm. that, oh, I'm leaving my child at home. With the babysitter while I'm out here in these streets. Very yeah. In the very beginning, that, mm-hmm. that those feelings did happen to me. And I talked to a lot of friends about that. And some of my single mom friends, they said the same thing. We'll be yeah. there, like, if I can watch my child, then why am I getting a babysitter to go out here? You're right. Still you. You're still using you. Yes. It's okay to move forward. It's okay to mm-hmm. the guilt. But then, go. Yeah. Yeah. Your child is your child. You are you. You still have an identity outside of that. You know, yeah. so up, true. I, mean, I know you people call, how's the baby? How are the kids doing? How's this? They don't even ask how you are no more. Like, oh, look. Ooh, that baby sure know how to dress. Dressed. Well, who dressed the baby? I dressed, first of all, I bought the outfit. I dressed the baby. That's why the baby know how to dress because I know how to dress this baby. So thank me. Appreciate it. I'm like, I might have felt that a little too hard in my chest, but okay, me too. I'm like, okay, so that's what's the type of way. Oof. Okay, other advice: <laughs> use your circle. Use your circle. Get a good sitter. Whatever yes. you need. Reliability. Reliability to have someone there on call. Oof. I don't want yeah. to use up. Oh, I can't go anywhere because I don't have anybody to watch my child. Mm-hmm. Did you try to get something? Oh, you're trying to put up a barrier. Maybe you're not ready yet. So yeah. Um. Talk talk to a therapist before you start dating. Mm. 
that should be like number one on the list. Um, even if you're, if you're anybody, talk to a therapist to see if you are in the right mental space. You might think you're in the right mental space until you go out with so and so, and then you go off on him or her, and you don't know why. Mm -hmm. you're and it might be just feelings that you're harboring still. Because so, you remember that time when that Negro or Negroette, okay? Remember that time they didn't pick that shit up off the floor, and you was like, "What, what does that mean? What, what the hell?" Are they are they twitch? Are they eye twitch? And you like, ooh, ooh, Jimmy's eye used to twitch like that when he was getting ready to lie. Oh, so you and it, the same thing. You can't do that. You can't. You can't even do that. Make That's sure what made me help. <laughs> you're okay, and we both go to therapy. We love. We love. Yeah, therapy. we we are strong advocates for it. I tell anybody therapy saves lives. It kept me from slapping my whole family. Um. You know, I'm new to gentle parenting. Um, sometimes my hands forget. Um, but they, they, we repair. We go back and we repair. We repair. We repair. Listen, listen. I'll be like, whoa. Let me get my book. <laughs> what does my book say on this? What does my book say? They gonna come huh? They gonna come Facts. Who? Who the people? The people? You always talk about. You always try to tell people on me. I understand what I be doing. Everything. Okay, my last <laughs> big, big, big piece of advice. Yeah, is wait to introduce your child to your new potential significant other. Mm, how long right? should you wait? That is up to you. That is up mm -hmm. to you. It may not always work out. Marriages don't always work out, and the child knows their daddy and mama, and they'll be <laughs> fine. They need them. They, they, they'll be fine. You know. Yes. Yeah. Wait. Just because you like so and so, and it is month one, and say, "Oh, let's go all hang out as a family." Mm -mm. Children, no, we're not a family. <laughs> Children go to school and tell every. My mama was at home and she was walking around and she was singing Trick Daddy and she was. Mm. Children <laughs> tell all. Children tell all. I tell true story. Went dropped James off at daycare. Walked in the door. And James the baby. Niece, he the baby. Niece kid. First thing she started telling me all the business. Why the dentist had a number up. And everything. I was like, dang. Ain't, ain't no family business with these kids. Ain't no secrets, y'all. My friends told us all was over, and they were having fun. Listen. They, I heard them on there. The, the board was knocking, and the TV was going, and everything. I was like, whoa. And then, then I heard the toilet flush. I don't know why the toilet was flushing. Toilet flush. They're going to tell them. And then, they're going to tell all your business. So, you you need to make sure right. that's what you want to do. Just, just wait to introduce your kids. You, you're protecting mm -hmm. yourself, and I know you're protecting your own feelings, but protect the children too. They are young. Yeah. You don't want them to have ten uncles or ten aunties. You're so messy. You're so messy. Uncle Baba, Uncle this, Uncle. Give them a moment as yeah. well, and also kind of evaluate where your kids are at in this thing too. Mm -hmm. Yes, kids are comfortable. To even get there, how do you have this conversation? Yeah, with people, it was like, mommy is dating somebody. Well, what about <sighs> what about mommy? What about what about? Mm -hmm. And you have to have that conversation. So prepare yeah. yourself for that conversation. And another little asterisk mark over here: if this is something that you and your ex can do, be respectful of that ex. Be respectful yeah. because that child yeah, is very mature. Are, you need to do bit maturity. You probably need to grow up. <laughs> <That's slow>. there. <laughs> but <laughs> there. But be respectful of that other parent. The parent, other parent loves the child too. Yeah. If you are introducing that child to every other person and that child's going to the other person saying that, mm. well, the parent's gonna become might become concerned. Yeah. And that's legit. I will become concerned, you know? So be respectful yeah. of the parent. If you don't have a strong relationship with them like that, and there's not something you could talk about, understandable. But if you yeah. have some sort of relationship or anything else, hey, I'm dating so it's serious. This is what we are doing. 
our yeah. child is going to be around this person. So I, I think a lot of respect has to go into that as well. Meaning yeah. the dating has to be mature. They got to be mature. You got to be mature. And your former partner also. It's like everyone has to grow up because at that point it becomes yeah, protecting <laughs> the child's feelings. Because children are so literal, right? And they're so impressionable. And most of them are pretty loving as well. Yeah. So it's like you kind of have to protect really protect them and in that space like to make sure that they're okay as you're protecting yourself like it's like twofold like make sure you're fully on board and you're fully committed and it's going to take longer than a month or two like they're while there's like you might make them yeah you might introduce them too quickly because of feeling like yeah take take the emotion out of it be objective so I was, I'm listening to Rachel Rogers' book. I think I was telling you about this the yes. other day. That we should all be millionaires. It when I tell you, did you get it? Did you get it? Oh the audio book. I'm ready. Let me tell you, I'm only like I think four or five chapters in listening to it. It's been life changing, like literally life changing. I just think about like, oh man, I lost my train of thought in real time. Who are we talking about? We were talking about the book the other day, and I'm like trying to get back there. I was like, dick on it. Oh, well, y'all, yeah, this, this is, listen, this is almost 40. This, this, I'm on the other side of being almost 40. This, <laughs> it'll come back. It's a spin off podcast. It's a spin off on this. But no, there was something that she said in the book that kind of went in line with talking about the, um, protection of like ourselves and just kind of like really taking care of ourselves. And I think like we owe that to ourselves as women to take the time to really, that's what it was. So she talks about a client who does an evaluation of her friends every year, like the people might. And I think I was thinking about this too. We talked about doing it. Maybe I talking about the no card, doing the evaluation, people who bring me joy. Like I'm really on this thing of if you bring me joy, it doesn't mean like, I started to yeah. And, and, Oh, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense because every, but, everybody can't come, right? Everybody can't be on the journey. And so before I would say, I mean, and I don't know this, but just from a logical standpoint, as I'm navigating the things that bring me joy, friendships, career, and things, I would venture for a, a person um, who's getting ready to date and they have a child, before you introduce that child, do an actual inventory. Of this person and that's going to take some time like yeah he brings you joy or she brings you joy right now but what happens when you have the first argument right what happens when there's a, or a life yeah or a life event how do people yeah. argue how do people yes press? how do people mm-hmm. that's some what if someone what if someone passes away and now there's grief or they lose their job how are they with finances like you really and it's because you have a child you really need to be very aware and cautious because special needs child. So it just kind of yeah like, that extra layer is like yeah okay. like that matters. Like really taking that time. And so I loved seeing hearing that because she like I said she talked about her client who does this. She was like talking about her boyfriend might not make it that year. The client was like because she was doing her literal annual evaluation. I started mine last month. I'm still kind of working through it. Oh my, evaluation on the bottom okay probably after this show we will disband so i just want to let you all know we say this every single uh week. all the time all the time not not once a week either many many times no several times probably within a day we've been trying to break up forever um, for almost six years and yet here we are so you're on the bottom of the list um you and there's I, who else would make the list for my life? I would make the list for the people in my life. Who else would do it? You didn't make my list. Like, oh, shut up. I, I'm t- number one on your list. <laughs> you lying. Now you come on the show lying. Just like a goat. I'm, just, I'm sick of it. <laughs> oh, baby goat. I'm going to baby goat you today. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. I will. But no, I think it's so important. I think there's some really good advice 
for all of us, like, you know, just and just taking that stock and taking the time. I think one of the life lessons I've learned here recently, how valuable it is to have time for yourself yeah. before dating, before entering marriage, before getting into any situation. It's really taking that time to evaluate. And you don't need an amen corner to tell you or validate whatever it is you're going to do because you need to know what you're going to do. But I think wise counsel, I think once you decide, okay, this person is going to meet my child, that at that point, I would think you will want wise counsel. Like, okay, here's where I am with my decision. Here's why I'm deciding that this is the time for me to make that move to introduce so-and-so to my babies, you know. And it's even helpful to ask yeah. people you care about, your friends, your family. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, this, you have you met this person yet? Right, because that's another level, too. When you're in love. When you're head over here in love, lust or whatever, you see one thing. Not lust. <laughs> When you digmatize, it gets you. Or for those who don't like yeah, that, you know. You might, you might see something else that you may not see. But everybody he may, she may munch you real good. Okay. Are they? I'm respectful of the pronouns here. Okay. But. However, comma. Make sure. Don't, don't, make sure. For the people to see. Yeah. And you know what? I, that's so good. When I was dating, before I, I was before I got married and stuff like that, I remember I did not do that. Um, and I was head over heels for somebody who, but it's twofold. So I was head over heels about that. It had I took wise counsel or listened, but I was too in love to listen at that time. And I listened. But had I listened, I could have saved some heartbreak. But also I realized had I started my healing journey a little earlier and like say in my 20s but in your 20s you don't know that you need to heal right you don't know that we we don't in our 30s i started when what nana was five not five four months so i've still been going through it and i would say we're doing we're here they're doing the work and that work is, it, it got to be done. It's not sexy work, but it has, it's work that has to be done nonetheless. Like, it's, it's a lot. So I think from what I'm hearing from you, like, to me, um, the biggest takeaway is really for, hey, mom, you need to make sure that you are healed. Well, are healing, because you're going to always be on your healing journey, but are able to have the tools to be able to uh, approach triggers or be able to set boundaries to be able to know but I do think you should fully learn to love yourself fully and wholeheartedly so that you know I think one of the things we say over at mom teens um that you know we hold very dear to us is that you you matter you as a woman matter you as a mother matter you are more than just this person that, that you gave life to yep. you are whole you matter and we have to make sure that we are reminded of that fact like that is like the mission of mom things it is like yo we gotta make sure our moms are feeling very seen very heard and that they know that they're not alone like and so Dating is kind of, that's you yes. reclaiming your identity outside of your child. And it is going to be hard. That guilt that you're going to feel going out there. I mean, we feel guilt anyway as moms, you know, when we're doing work, when, whenever we leave our kids. Like, nice. I mean, now, now the, the guilt for me is, is out the door. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm out. So I'm running out. I was proud. I went out last night for dinner with a friend, and I was like, they came in. Where are you going, mom? You all just, I'm going to dinner, and I'm out. Hugs and kisses. <laughs> Daddy, you got it? All right. Good job, husband. And I'm out. Like, out the door. What's for dinner? I don't know. Whatever your dad decides to make you all. I hope you eat. Um, but God bless you. I hope you eat. I do. I hope you all eat. Um, but it's not, I'm not, not going to be worried. I can't, I, I can't now do emotional. You want me to do some emotional labor too and figure out what you going to eat? 
there's a whole other adult here that can help you. But also, you two older ones know how to make sandwiches, if nothing more. Go eat. Try go eat some go. You know how to pour. You know how to pour cereal. Um, I slowly started letting them learn how to use the stove under supervision to make That's noodles fine. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw you, like, your TikToks was probably, like, kind of, like, really helped. No, and then, have, like... I only have, like, two TikToks. <clears throat> one real TikTok. Oh, well, just true. Well, that's true. You're not a real TikToker like myself. So, oh, uh, 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 but they're so cute. But it's beautiful to see that. Like... Be a chef. He wants to be a chef. So, I was like, let me... Try. Yes. Listen. So, you know, my girlfriend wrote the book Soul Food Sunday. I think I got that portrayed. But, Winsome. Hey, Winsome. Um... But that was one thing I loved about her book was that it was a little boy in the kitchen with his grandmother making, helping her make Sunday dinner. And it's like showing kids how to be independent, like, yeah. which will help you go out on a date because, you know, your house won't burn down, mom. So, you know, when you leave them with the babysitter, hopefully they won't stab the babysitter and cook her up. But um, they at least, no, I don't know. That had nothing to do with probably leaving to go on a date. But I'm just saying that could happen. It could happen, right? I know what you're talking about. What you're not going to do is bring up the past I'm on the show. Now today. I ain't gonna mess with today. He asked you for the crab leg nicely. And he got a plastic knife with him. Right in your stuff. And when we say plastic knife, we mean literally the ones that go with the fake kitchens, like not an actual right. serrated plastic knife. So just so we're clear on the type of knife it's that was used. Real. It yeah, real. it will play the one. However, I'm holding it against he, I might have to post that picture. Cause that picture of him oh, holding that that crab, the whole cl- like, why you got my whole crab leg? Like- and it was spicy. And, and them kids love seafood. Uh, cause Sid had a whole meltdown that uh, Mo wanted to share her crab legs with her. Yeah, whoa, crab legs. Yo, you can't do that. My it's my doing. Mine. It's mine. This is mine. But I think this has been so good and so helpful. So, like, before we go, you know, I like to ask you all, like, tell us, like, how we can find you. What are you working on? Well, first, what are you working on? Do you have anything down the pipeline? I know you and I have some some pretty big things happening for ourselves. But, like, what are you getting ready to do? And then kind of, like, how people... I'm going to hear these dogs today. Oh the other children. The other children, the fur babies. Yeah, because um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they need love too. But like, and how can people connect with you? So you can connect with me on Instagram, Dr. Health Squire, D-R-H-E-A-L-T-H-S-Q-U-I-R-E, 229. Okay, because I was like, yeah, really not to help squire yes. nine. I'm I love sure that. Put all that on there, but that's me um, on Instagram. Oh, what am I working on? A little bit of everything. I, I do really, really, really do from being a room parent to attorney, <laughs> too much. healthcare, everything, and even in the works of as as we mentioned, my son likes to cook, making his own little cooking little book it's kind so of thing. Cute. So, we're going to put it out there since he said he wants to be a chef. I was like, I got you, baby. I got I'm you. I'm so excited. Well, this has been fun. Um, well, I want you to be safe should you decide to dive into that, that dating pool. Because like I said earlier. I might already be in it. I might be. You in might be in. Um, listen, it's peeing. Up, Are you in the part without the pee and the poop? I wouldn't have mm-hmm. posted a person. So we'll never see him. The only- I never know the names of the people. <laughs> I know that I am legitimately with somebody is probably the day before I get married. I'm hoping. Oh, actually, I'm going to post me as the flower girl. I can't. It's going to be me where I post. Oh, look, I'm engaged next day, married. But wait, what? Who? Yes. And then we're like, I was the flower girl. Yeah. I got to be super private for, for more than one. Okay, well, that's goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Because I don't know who you think you are, Hollywood, but no. I mean, you are no. great because you need to be. And I'll leave it. Good, Good day. <laughs>
I love you, girl. <laughs> we gotta go, y'all. Yeah. Until then, we see y'all on the other side. Stay safe.